Hi guys, I'm Lima, the one you've heard so many wonderful things about. Previously on BJ Investigates. There is something seriously wrong with the channel Soft White Underbelly. When you look at the story of Amanda, you start to look at the ethics of the channel a little bit differently. Let me just get this straight. The sun and the government will make me extra horny if I have sex with you? Yeah. What are you doing tonight? Lima Yamramovich? Yamramovich. You have a company yeah. ca called Aura. We also use virtual reality so we can put patients in triggering environments. You're back. Yes. So you chose Amanda. Yes, I chose Amanda. Which I think is very brave of you. Thank you. We're going to use Amanda as a case study. Amanda, where are you from? Where do you grow up? Do you, do you see that you're kind of getting worse and worse every time we speak? When I was smoking, I'm like, in the cut, and then I'm going to get murdered. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm behind the scenes, I'm annoying everybody, and then I get murdered. She had passed away. They did the autopsy. They looked at her medical records. And so I'm just going to read it word for word of what we got. Um, the cause of death was marked as a seizure disorder. Um, I have those autopsy results. Hydralazine. That don't sound like Tylenol. All she had in her system was Tylenol. Lozartan, gabapentin, clonidine. That don't sound like Tylenol. And risperidone, which also don't sound like Tylenol. All she had in her system was Tylenol. Basically, Lima Sue and me. The jury of my peers is going to decide this case. And the facts at hand are whether you're a liar. The main woman that's been attacking me and kind of lead, leading the witch hunt, um, you know, uh, she... Cool, cool, cool. All right, so BJ, you're back. Yes. Welcome back. Thank um, you. So last time you were here, we spoke about Lima Yovremovich's video entitled Amanda's Autopsy Report, and you have some updates. Yes. So just to clarify, it was called Amanda's Autopsy Results hyphen Lima. <laughs> not report, just to clarify. So my updates are, Lima has made a response. Yesterday, I'm, I'm definitely not minding my own business, but someone alerted me to the fact that Mark had posted a video with Lima in it. Lima, welcome back. Thank you, Mark. So you've become an expert on how to help people. You did such a great job with Amanda. Which didn't surprise me. I did feel like that was coming. I actually had invited them to do that. Have Lima back on your channel and interview her about it or just get her to correct the record. And I actually had invited both of them and the invitation remains open today to come on my channel, either one, and say what they need to say, say their side. And so I felt like the public invitation was uh, invitation enough but whenever it was time to start doing my work for the day I went to the video and I watched it it's just getting so hard to keep up with what version of the story they're gonna go with Lima welcome back thank you Mark and, and so your company Aura helps therapists interpret their patients reactions right basically yes yeah, so it just tracks which patients are at highest risk and which patients are at lowest risk and um, Amanda didn't have any value of herself. She got treated just like horrifically on the street and she just, her self-worth was at like a negative. When she went into the treatment center and she had a longer period of time, they were looking at her baseline and they're like, she doesn't have schizophrenia. The schizophrenia was drug induced. Um, these are all details that prior I was hesitant to give out, but since her medical information's been shared all over the internet, which is unfortunate, 
um, you know, it's, it's public information now. So I would like to take this opportunity to actually agree with something Lima said. She said that Amanda's healthcare information had been shared all over the internet and so now it's public. But what she left out is the quote, witch hunters are not the ones who shared this information at first instance. It was actually Larry Rabb. Uh, I had her diagnosed and it was schizophrenia bipolar. Mark Leta. There, there was one time that I was, uh, you might remember, I was trying to take her to the clinic to get the prescription for her schizophrenia. As soon as she figured out that I wasn't taking her to my studio, she backs her legs up and starts, she's gonna kick the windows out of my car to get out of a moving vehicle. <laughs> it's like, so I had to let her out. And Amanda herself. You know, yes, you were addicted to crack, but you were also schizophrenic from the crack? Right, it was from the crack. Once I stopped smoking crack, it, it, it went away. <laughs> you said it about your dad that one time, and I left it in because I didn't know who you were or, or your dad, and you were right. just some little street urchin that came into my studio with, a, right. with no bra on, no, no shirt on. <laughs> in this video, I do want to put clips side by side so people don't have to take my word for it, right? I thought I was kind of making people's lives easier by, you know, just telling them what the gist and the summary of the situations was. But I guess, you know, some people, like me, really want all the details. So what I'm gonna do is just put Lima's words together. Now, there is a whole bunch of confusion and hubbub surrounding and around whether or not Amanda Rabb was in a conservatorship or a guardianship. She was not in a conservatorship or a guardianship, but Lima and Larry did try to implement one. And you're gonna hear Lima tell you in her own words right now what the real truth is behind a conservatorship and a guardianship, and that's that they're exactly the same thing because they assign the rights of one person to another person and sometimes a complete stranger. What we were trying to do was file what's called an LPS conservatorship. It's the equivalent of a guardianship in, um, you know, to, in the in the grand understanding, it's that um, guardianships are called LPS conservatorships in LA and California. Um, Conspiracy theories and crazy stuff swirling around BAM. I would love to set the record straight. BAM has not ever been under a conservatorship. The temporary guardianship he was under did not ever have any financial implications. What we were trying to do was file what's called an LPS conservatorship. It's the equivalent of a guardianship. We attempted to file an LPS conservatorship, but Amanda's public defender was overwhelmed with how many cases he had, so he never filed the documentation. Um, these conservatorships are extremely difficult to get. The um, issue with that was that we were not able to have communication between the jail and the doctor at the jail, but we had everything else on our end with a second doctor referring it. And so Amanda has a public defender. As a public defender, they have so many uh, clients that it's really hard for them to dedicate the time required to actually push some something like that through. It's very confusing to me what even actually just happened, but I wanted to show y'all the two sort of not the same stories that she's telling about why she couldn't get a conservatorship. We diverted to put to put in a court order for Amanda to complete one year of treatment. So she risks that if she doesn't complete it, she goes back to jail. And so essentially we just applied to the court for a court order. So Amanda was never under guardianship. She was never under conservatorship. Um, she, she didn't have um, any type of like healthcare directive agent or anything like that. So we were going for an LPS conservatorship to ensure that we had power of attorney to make the decisions for Amanda. Um, she, she didn't have um, any type of like healthcare directive agent or anything like that. She just had the court telling her like, you need to go. She had att attacked her father, which was a felony because she attacked him with a weapon. Um, and they were looking at either jail time for her. That last day that I went to court, she was set to be released. They were looking at either jail time for her. She was set to be released. And so I just petitioned like, this is not a criminal situation, it's a mental health situation. Um, so we essentially just asked the judge if um, we cash paid her treatment and got, got her out of the system so she's not a burden on the system, would he be willing to court order treatment instead of jail time? Jail she would have been free for 10 days, right? She, not for 10 days. Um, she would have been 
potentially released the last time I came. So that last that last day that I went to court, she was set to be released. She was set to be released. And so I just petitioned, like this is not a criminal situation, it's a mental health situation. So we essentially just asked the judge if um, we cash paid her treatment and got, got her out of the system so she's not a burden on the system. She was set to be released um, back onto the street because there were no other options for her. Um, and so initially when speaking to the district attorney, I notified her that this was not Amanda's first time, which was already something that was known, and that, that she's in a very um, bad mental state. So based on that information is what um, made them shift gears. She was set to be released and say that if we were willing to take responsibility, so basically myself, willing to ensure that I report everything to the courthouse and make sure that Amanda doesn't violate anything and um, ensure that she follows court order, that they would consider giving her a mandated one-year plan, which would be the essential um, path of an LPS conservatorship. So Amanda was never under guardianship. She was never under conservatorship. A mandated one-year plan, which would be the essential path of an LPS conservatorship. Would he be willing to court order treatment instead of jail time? Last week, early morning, you know, you got to be at court 8.30. 8.30. So, and Amanda's in jail. Amanda's, she's, she's in jail for an assault. Assault on you. On me. And she's expecting release, so Amanda's very provocative. She's talking as she's coming yeah. in. And you can't decide that she needs to go to rehab. No, she's an adult. The f after the first six months, then she took 21 and said, no, remember, I'm an adult. So early morning, 8.30, she's been locked up now for a few weeks. She has a court date, but we have to petition to try to get conservatorship. And Ms. Lima shows up and petitions. Her appearance and her, her presence made the difference because I would have known what to say, but the way she presented it, it was so authentic and they knew that this is for real. These are sponsors, these are people that's gonna help my family, help Amanda. Would he be willing to court order treatment instead of jail time? She was set to be released. She's expecting release. She was set to be released. But to help Amanda will help the family. Larry, t tell me what happened in court last week. Yeah, there she was, Miss Lima. She's coming to support us. She was set to be released. And after she talks to the DA and the, the public defender, we have Amanda's case, second. Like I said, she was just coming out petitioning. Now who makes this decision? Do, do I go home today? I have someplace else to live. I don't have to go to my... F she had all of her presentation ready to go. So the judge, he was very accommodating, but he let her know, did, did the, the attorney tell you, you know, he's gonna... Yes, the attorney admitted, yeah, I've told her what to expect. She's expecting release. And she said to him, she's, he said to her, would she be up for long-term care? She's expecting release. She was set to be released. He said it very, at the end of his presentation, and she said yes. Amanda chose the longer rehab. She said yes, unequivocally. She had no, she just said yes. No. And she chose the longer rehab as opposed to a shorter one. That's amazing. She just said yes into the longer rehab. Yeah, so she had the option of being released you know, a week ago when I was here, she was set to be released. You know, going back and having her own plan or at the end of the month, um, she could stay in jail and wait until another court date. And so um, they told her that I'm working with her father to help put in, you know, put her in a program and have a long-term plan for her. And um, if she would consider to um, stay in jail a little bit longer and postpone her court date, but they need her to, um, to say okay to not hold court that day so that they can review all of our paperwork, what the program is, which treatment center she would go to. And yesterday she said, I'm so glad I called you today. She said, you really have a good rehab for me to go to? And I said, yes, this, this lady's the real deal, you know? And, and she said, are you sure? I said, yes. And I said, yes, we have a good rehab for you to go into when you leave there. She's expecting release. She was set to be released. And she said, I'm so glad I called you today. And they were looking at either jail time for her. Would he be willing to court order treatment instead of jail time? She was set to be released. I mean, it's a shame because so much of your, your <clears throat> it's like you're a crusader almost for helping these people, like whether it's Amanda, who tragically passed away, but, but at the end, Amanda was as sober as you and I are right now. And, and, and she said some of the sweetest things about you. She said to me privately that you, 
you saved your life. The autopsy results came, you read them, but tell me about, explain what happened with the autopsy. Uh, yeah, well, the problems actually stemmed before that. They were making the, all these conspiracies Well, before first that. off, it, it took how many months for them to, to Clark County to get the autopsy um, So it took them seven months uh, before they actually gave us an answer. Um, and that so, seems awfully long. Yeah, that's awfully long. Um, it was a very frustrating process. And so I'm just going to read it word for word of what we got. Um, the cause of death was marked as a seizure disorder. Myself and the investigation team have requested Amanda's autopsy report. Can y'all read what this says? Cause of death. 25-year-old black female Amanda Rapp died of cardiac arrhythmia. When they finally came back with an answer, uh, they said Amanda died from arrhythmia, cardiac, cardiac arrhythmia. arrhythmia relating to schizophrenia. The cause of death was marked as a seizure disorder. And so then we responded with, you know, Amanda didn't have schizophrenia. Did you get her medical records from the treatment center she passed away at? And um, they believe that it was post-traumatic seizure, dis uh, post-traumatic epilepsy, but they couldn't mark it as post-traumatic epilepsy because of a lack of evidence. If the traumatic brain injury and the assaults were well documented, they would have most likely marked it as a homicide. So um, that was a major wake-up call for all of us. And, um, and their, their response was, oh, we never received those medical records. Um, she was at that facility for six months, and they didn't get her medical records from the facility she passed away from. Um, so we responded, and um, we sent them videos. Also, the autopsy report says that Amanda didn't have any type of traumatic brain injury that she was never, uh, <laughs> no, you know. Didn't. So anyways, we sent them all of these things and upon review, um, the doctor that performed the autopsy report sent me back, um, you know, an email that you also have a copy of and um, essentially stating that they're going to amend the autopsy results now that they have this additional information that they somehow overlooked. Um, and it, so, made, it made you look bad in the social media world. And they also knew that I was going to give a public statement um, because they had all of your videos. Um, and so I read directly from exactly what the doctor sent me, word for word, word for word of what we got because I didn't want to mess it up. Um, and I guess they never amended the autopsy report. So we're waiting for a response from Clark County. I'm actually, um, I've had to, um, request that they do issue a public statement because I'm not trying to do the he said she said thing. Um, I'd rather it come from the source. All she had in her system was Tylenol and um, for me to reveal what medication somebody's on is outside of HIPAA law and so at the time prior to everything becoming so public because of these people seeking to get medical records and autopsy results and all of that and posting it all over the internet against the wishes of the family and the privacy and respect for Amanda. Um, you know, I couldn't list her actual medications that she was taking because that would require me actually revealing what her mental illness diagnosis was. The question was, did Amanda relapse? And my answer was no, she just had Tylenol in her system. They, well, I know that they did an, um, a toxicology report all she had in her system was Tylenol. She didn't relapse on drugs. She stayed sober, she died sober. And I was told that she had Tylenol in her system. I guess it was actually aspirin in her system. Um, and I was just reading exactly what I was given. So, um, No, I think, I think some people love to create a scandal where maybe there isn't one. Absolutely. And and they, they realize they can get a lot of views on a video that way and make some money yeah. maybe on YouTube. About a month ago, YouTube changed their policy on sex-related content on their platform, demonetizing all the videos that have any kind of sexual content. That impacts about two-thirds of the videos that are on my channel. If you wanted to support my, my channel financially, I guess you could do so by su subscribing to the subscription channel, which is $10 a month. You get ad-free versions of all the videos. You'll get uh, about 200 exclusive videos that are not on YouTube and, and more to come. So one other thing she said in this Mark Leta video, and she says it in the lawsuit as well, um, is 
I've been sued by my school. She's She's been sued by her school. We have a history of doing this to other people too, right? They have histories of doing this to other people. She's also like been sued by her school. Y'all know where I went to school? Went to school at the University of Pennsylvania Law School. It's the number five law school in the country. I had to take out well over $150,000 to attend that school. And that was after I received a hundred and thirty something thousand dollars scholarship. So when I took those loans out, I took them mostly from the government, like probably a lot of y'all did. And then there was a special program at Penn Law for the poor kids, which I was. I was definitely probably the lowest income student in my whole entire class, if not just certainly in the bottom five, as far as finance brackets go. When I started law school, I was on food stamps. I've been poor my whole life. There was a special poor kid scholarship. Y'all, some of y'all might've heard of them. You could take a loan from the school. And the way those loans work, of course, is when you pay them back, you have to pay interest. So let's say I took out $1,000 loan with a 5% interest rate. When I start making my money later, when it's time to pay the loan, I have to pay them 1,000 plus 5%. So 1,050 goes back to them. And they take that $50 that they just profited off of me and put it back into their endowment. That's how it works, but it's it's legal, it's fine. And I participated in that type of a poor kid loan. I think I took out a total of 8,000 or so dollars. And instead of talking to y'all about the cause of death and the drugs in the Amanda Rab system right now, I'm having to defend myself because I'm a frankly cog in the whole machine of a badly incentivized financial system that forces people to transcend poverty by taking out so much debt that we can't always pay it back immediately. So in the middle of a global pandemic, the law school was sending me letters to collect on the loan. I didn't get them. I didn't see the letters. I didn't know they were trying to collect on the loan. I had from my other loans, the information that they were not collecting on loans during the pandemic. Y'all remember that? I didn't know anybody was about to start asking me for money. I had no idea. The first time I heard about it was a couple weeks before Lima threatened me with this lawsuit. And then she put it in the lawsuit. Now she's saying it on soft white underbelly. They have a history of doing this to other people too, right? They have histories of doing this to other people. Um, the main woman that's been attacking me and kind of lead, leading the witch hunt, um, you know, uh, she, to my knowledge, is unemployed. So she's just pushing out these videos and monetizing them and they're getting a lot of views. Um, she's also like been sued by her school. And she got sued by her school. She's also like been sued by her school. What does that have to do with each other? And I'm not gonna go so far as to say it's defamatory, but I certainly believe it's her trying to use something that is completely reasonable and explainable to try and make it seem like me and her are somehow on the same damn level. And we are not. The thought of that is preposterous to me. It's, it's frankly unrelated to anything having to do with this. But yes, y'all, I went to a very expensive school. I got a lot of money and scholarships and I still had to take out a lot of debt. I have debt still left over from my undergrad. Joe Biden's little forgiveness ain't gonna probably even touch that. But listen, actually, I think it might. I do feel a little bit nervous, to be honest, um, to admit this about debt because I feel like it's possible that Lima might see that as an inability to take care of my finances and put me in a conservatorship at an R facility. Then just as I'm kind of like getting together all the inconsistencies in the story on the soft white underbelly channel, I'm alerted to yet another video later in the afternoon that is in existence that is posted having to do with Lima on her own channel. Good. Thank you. She should be posting videos. It's about damn time she said something about her actions. It's about time she said something about what she's been doing. So fine. I mean, she's got like a, a Mark Leta lookalike editing it. We've got blue hair. I'm thinking it's possible maybe he's a twin too somehow because it really looks like he's looking for thing too. If you know what I mean? Hi guys, I'm Lima, the one you've heard so many wonderful things about. And this is my friend, Dustin. Hey, how's it going? So I'm the one that edited this video together. I tried to keep it funny. I have a YouTube channel myself. Chad, I didn't study. Neither did I. What are we gonna do? Need to 
distraction. And this is my friend Dustin. Today, we're gonna enjoy some cigarettes and then accidentally light ourselves on fire. Oh. Are you okay? I think so. I gotta stop smoking. I had a yeah. I had a snake bite. I had the fucking I would rip the shit out this bitch. Yeah, that's some dude. There's Justin. Okay, that's don't worry, I won't touch you in the way I like. It ain't liquor, bitch. Uh. Okay, first. There you go. Wow, don't do that, you fucker. <laughs> and if you guys want to support me, please go support him because he's helping me out a lot. And while you're at it, make sure you subscribe to this channel so that we can get through all of the drama together and get back to doing what we're the best at, which is helping people. She had passed away just go ahead and get right into it. Now this is just speculation. I'm just a conspiracy theorist. Y'all know that. Can Lima have some ties to the police department? Lima, who should be in jail, allegedly. Mm -hmm, her. Allegedly. They were using those mind control helmets. When I put this on, the alien mothership comes into my brain, tells me what to say. Really hard to make a comment on this stuff because it misrepresents so much of what I do. It's really hard for me to comment on it. I don't even know where to start. Get in touch with your feelings as you look into the eyes of this person on this picture. Lima, who's a virtual reality inventor. So virtual reality has been around since 1968. Safe to say I didn't invent it, but I wish I did. I thought it was like a very obvious nod to the earlier surprise witness vlog style editing, the sort of SpongeBob references and things like that. Um, cute and honestly flattering because I could tell that I really inspired the look in the video and Jake definitely inspired the editing of the video. I mean, it's clear. So I do know that somebody's been watching those videos. Thank you very much. But honestly, what we do is some of the best in the entire world. So obviously people are gonna be copying the editing. We see it all the time. We're not mad about it. We see it, it's cute. For the most part, there's stuff in there that's just kind of funny. And y'all know I'm the biggest fan of a wacky edit. She did like a little compilation. Actually, Thing One edited it. And a compilation of all the different ways people on the internet are saying Lima's name. Now, if you have a very complicated to say name, like Yevrimovich, or complicated to spell within a certain spelling system, probably people mispronounce your name. And it's probably like a downside, you know? And so that person should get to make a little joke. Like, oh, look at all these people saying my name wrong. Okay, that's fine. I, that's fine. But then there was some stuff in there that she said, um, just kind of like as jokes that I felt like was just not a joke at all. And it kind of reminds me of that Steve-O tattoo where it's like people defend it by saying it's a joke, but it's, if, if you just call it what it is and it's not a joke, then you have to really address what really is that they're saying. Some of the jokes that they put in the video, to be honest, just weren't so funny. It was inappropriate. And it doesn't really surprise me because thing one, with the, the Mark Lato look-alike with the blue hair, essentially what he did was he took a clip from one of my live streams about Bam Margera, and he um, took out a part where I was talking about the outfit or the clothes that Lima was wearing in this particular video. I appreciate that you, um mentioned this uh leora they are dressed like they're just stepped away from a graveside service and i do think that they did just leave the funeral or some type of service or something like that because why are they dressed like this but it was just kind of like a one-off live stream i mean i don't i don't do scripts in this live stream i said what are they even wearing it looks like they just stepped out of a graveside service what are they wearing and in that edit uh destin dern took one of my favorite pictures that i've ever taken 
uh, that I've ever been in, right? And he edited it over the over my voice, right? So it's like, what are they wearing? And it shows a picture of me and my fiance, Prem, in uh, wearing a lingo. Like we're wearing traditional Indian clothes. We're at a, a friend's wedding. It was beautiful. It was lovely. I have no complaints about the entire time. It was great. And it was a beautiful celebration and a beautiful event. Actually, for the last since I took that picture, it's been the lock screen on my phone. Okay, it is one of my favorite pictures of all time ever. Okay, first of all, I just love the picture. I think it's so cool and, and so great. I was re-watching a portion of it or something somebody sent me. So I don't really remember, but I was re-watching a part of it. And I saw really in, in full screen what that edit and what Lima was really doing with that picture. They are dressed like they're just stepped away from a graveside service. Why are they dressed like this? Uh, because we did. That was the video that we shot when Amanda passed away and we went to her funeral. I got very upset. It, it was enraging because I remember discussions that I've had with my fiance Prem, who was born in India and moved over to the United States after having to spend years apart from his father, who was busting his ass to build something for his family to have a safe place to live and escape persecution. I'm thinking about all this, right? Because Lima's now made, made the outfits a butt of a joke. The butt of a joke. And I'm just thinking, I'm remembering Prim telling me when he was a little boy, he was in soccer. Like he had just gotten to the United States a couple years, a year or something earlier. And then happened. We'll have to blur that out. He, his family was afraid because of how they were being treated based on the clothes they were wearing. Prim shared with me and gave me permission to share this, that he used to feel ashamed and embarrassed and scared for his mother to be seen at his school in her traditional clothing. And I just remember how proud and good Prim felt that day. And we talked about this as well. He said he worked very hard to overcome those feelings of fear of judgment and embarrassment and all that stuff that was imposed upon him at such a young age. He said he had to actually work pretty hard to get over all that. And now he's proud of that. He, he, told, he told me just this morning, he used to wear American suits to Indian weddings. But now since he's worked on, you know, all this probably trauma of people making him feel afraid his whole life because of his traditional clothing, and his mom's clothing and his dad's clothing, that he's kind of overcome that now. And just for for that to all be sort of made into the butt of a joke. They are dressed like they're just stepped away from a graveside service. Why are they dressed like this? Uh, because we did. In a, in a silly hate edit video, Lima's first video back ever, after I uncovered and other people are now uncovering on their own independently, that Lima didn't tell the truth about the drugs in Amanda Rabb's system and about her cause of death. That's not the only thing she didn't tell the truth about. And it's all documented. And her first video back ever to address those things makes somebody else's culture the butt of a joke. And that ain't the only place she did it. There's another part of the video featuring another creator content creator from TikTok is where I found out about her, but she's everywhere, she's all over YouTube. And she is a very fierce activist. This needs to be discussed right now. This BJ Investigates woman has broken down how she came to find out about the woman that is in the video. The one that helped Amanda from beginning to end. I'm sure she has all kinds of things going on in her life but she's made it a point to make lots of videos about this subject to try and receive some type of investigation, some type of justice for Amanda Rad. And I really appreciate all the work that she's done to amplify my story and to find her own investigations as well. I really appreciate it. And Lima put a picture up with this shower head showering on her. I didn't even notice it at first, but now I'm realizing Lima thinks this is a shower cap. That's not a shower cap, girl. It's called a bonnet. You put it on your hair to protect it from things like uh, dehydration and heat damage and just, you know, damage frizz, all kinds of, it's good for your hair. It's usually made out of satin or silk, but it's very obvious to me that Lima doesn't spend a whole lot of time looking into and respecting other people's culture. Cause maybe then she would know a little bit of something about some Ayurvedic oils to put in her hair and wrap it up in a bonnet because then her ends wouldn't look so crispy. 
but it's clear to me she don't know what a bonnet is. Now, I really thought that you thought that you ate with coming for my bonnet. Maybe I should look into something about being attacked derogatorily and discriminatorily towards you making fun of what I wear on my head simply because I'm what? Black? Because ain't that the type of person you was working with that met with an untimely demise in your case? Making other people's culture the butt of a joke in the land of the free because you're in a fight with me? Instead of addressing Amanda Rabb's cause of death on that video, then she said in the video, oh, I'm gonna take the next couple weeks and address these rumors. In the next few weeks, I'm going to be taking the time to respond to everything that's being said about me online. I really appreciate all of the support. Thank you guys, bye. Girl, I've been talking about this for months. Your first video back is a thing one edit. The little joke's calling me a devil because I have a unicorn in my room. That's cute, but let's just call it what it is. Thing one compiled a bunch of people saying a bunch of stuff about the devil that showed Lima in a unicorn costume. I told you that the unicorns are symbolic. The devil. This is some really sinister shit. Y'all know I love unicorns. I love it. I just like it. I like unicorns always have and always will. For me, it's a, it's a symbol of innocence and purity, but I don't give a shit. Y'all can think it means the devil. I like it. I like unicorns. I'm gonna keep getting them. I'm gonna keep showing them. I ain't sorry for it. That's fine. It's cute. It doesn't really hurt my feelings because I don't give a shit who y'all think I am, especially her and Destin Dern. Please. Speaking of cotton candy, that's all I'll say. The point is, I thought it was profoundly inappropriate for Lima to make, particularly my fiance and my family's culture, the butt of an internet joke. Why are they dressed like this? In an already arguably inappropriate video for like the context of the whole thing. Whenever she's mad at me. Jokes like that are not funny. Trying to say, what are you wearing and embarrassing me for wearing something that signifies royalty and honor that's not a joke so maybe in your next hate edit you can run it through somebody who has any type of sense because it's really just common sense suffice it to say that it's getting really difficult to keep up with what version of the story she wants to tell and with what version of lima she wants to be because on mark Leita's channel she's sort of got this somber like little bit aggressive confrontational kind of I don't know, air about her, persona about her. There's been a lot of misinformation spread um, about Amanda, about Larry, about myself and you, of just people kind of trying to make entertainment out of the situation, taking people's pain and turning it into like views and clicks. And on her channel, she's wearing completely different clothes, completely different colors, completely different look. The hair is different, the makeup's different. So I'm the one that edited this video together. I tried to keep it funny. Despite making light of the situation in this video, intentional choices are all different. The way she speaks, the way she acts, the words Lima told you and Mark told you on these videos over the past years and just compare them to one another. People are kind of trying to make entertainment out of the situation. Despite making light of the situation in this video, facts ain't defamation.